Hi, I'm your host, Teresa McGarry, and welcome to Success Story Spotlights. Today, our success story guest is Michelle Glasscock. Hi, Michelle. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. So tell me about when we met. It seems like you were having some brake problems or something. Yeah, actually, I um, really needed an oil change. And when I was at Christian Brothers Automotive um, in Shawnee, uh, the mechanic and owner came out and informed me that my rear brakes were like shot and they couldn't let me like drive off on them. And that it was a blessing and a miracle that I hadn't been in a wreck um, wreck yet. It stopped working. And um, I was definitely freaked out. Um, and so, because I, I, I um, for the first time in my life, I mean, I, I had a, um, kind of a medical crisis and, um, I wasn't able to work. And so I'm, I'm on the tail end of that coming out of that, but I just didn't have the funds to repair my brakes. I was literally in survival mode. And, um, the owner sat down with me and, um, we talked and, um, she told me about money talk and Teresa and I filled out an application or she only filled out the application on, um, on their computer. And then, um, it got sent off. And then like a couple of days, like, it was really fast. Like a couple of days later, uh, you called me and I think we had what, a two or three hour conversation just talking <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so that's how we, we first met. And then, um, and then we've officially met in person. Um, you were kind enough to, um, offer assistance in driving me to and from, um, a ketamine infusion at my doctor's office in, um, not Aletha, what's it called? Lawrence and Lawrence. Yeah. So that was a lot of driving that day, but that's okay. That's what you needed. And that's what we did. So. Yeah. And that was, I mean, and that was a huge help because I had to cancel two other infusions or re reschedule them and try to find rides, but I, I just could not find a ride, um, at like to the doctor's office and back. And so it was really frustrating, um, that I wasn't able to like get this treatment. And, um, even though, I mean, yeah, I, I couldn't get just cause like, I couldn't get, I wasn't supposed to drive afterwards. And, um, and then I was like, well, can I stay in a hotel? But then, you know, there's the issues with money of staying at a hotel. And um, it was just really frustrating. So it was definitely very extremely, not just very, but extremely helpful, um, your help of getting me to and from that appointment. Well, I'm glad I was able to help. And you definitely needed a ride home. As I recall, after getting you something to eat, you slept most of the way back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it knocked you out. It was, yeah, it was good. But I'm glad it helped. I'm glad I was able to get you there and help out in that way. So, yeah, thank you again. So, I know you have worked with other nonprofits and other agencies trying to get different services. Can you tell me what that's been like and what some of those struggles have been like and compared to working with us? um whatever you want to share yeah 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 um well I would say there's a uh, there's a lot of organizations who that want to help um but a lot of them have um like their funding has to be used in a very specific way um based on either the grant or how they wrote up their the business proposal um and or um the, the type of client they're working with or the situation that the client is in. And I, at large, um, fall in like every single crack. And so the help that I was needing um, with like having no income and still being, trying to be a part of, um, of trying to be a part of the, I guess, um, regular world, <laughs> um, as far as communication goes and transportation goes and, uh, trying to get help and medical treatment. Um, it was really frustrating, um, because some of the ways that I was 
that I was needing help was and is and has been um, like with car insurance. Um, I had issues with my driver's license and when I got sick and um, because I didn't have car insurance and I couldn't get car registration and I'm trying to work my way out of that mess. Um, but no one would help with um, car insurance. And um, so I, I mean, I was driving around very minimally, but still I was driving around with no car insurance, no driver's license and no car registration. That's like three strikes and you're out. And, um, and then also um, I had an issue with um, my insurance and, um, and, and getting medication. And um, there's some help with medication, but like through, I'm gonna, through the, I'm gonna say the, uh, probably the, the most well-known organization in Kansas City who helps with medication, they, um, I think you can get help once a year and um, you have like a lifetime limit uh, but they don't help with um, any type of uh, controlled substances. And I was needing, like one of my medications is an ADHD medication. And so, um, which actually plays a big role in my keeping my anxiety under control and helps with my mood actually. And so, um, so to not have help with that um, would have created a lot of like instability. And so, um, and then um, I think I was having issues with my um, with with food stamps, um, and there was a gap. And um, Teresa and Money Talk was able to um, like help with a, a gift card to Walmart. Yeah, and um, and the thing I mean I, I definitely appreciated the help, but I really appreciated. She asked me like, "Hey, where do you go grocery shopping?" And so um, I was able to, you know, get a card and actually go where I usually get my all my groceries um, instead of just, you know, going to some like random, I don't know, high vee or someplace that I don't know. Um, uh, <laughs> um, and, and yeah, and so, um, and then um, when was it? I guess it's been, it's been like five or six weeks, I think, since I, um, since I got my dog Zoe, and um, Money Talk um, helped with that. Um, my doctor had written um, uh, an, a letter for an emotional support animal, and um, I've, I've had a dog. I mean, the past eleven years, um, but back in January two thousand twenty, I had to um, give my dog to a foster home um, in order for me to go to treatment and. Um, this past year or so, I haven't had a four-legged friend, and uh, we were uh, we were talking, and she was like, "Hey, let's go to let's go get the animal shelter and look." And um, and she helped with um, with the adoption fees, and and then also with all like the like startup things you need for like a new pet. And so um, like bones and food and toys and a collar and a leash and um, dog it food, was- Yeah, dog food, all of that, flea and tick, heartworm medicine. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that was just such a blessing. Um, and uh, because it, it wasn't, I mean, it, it, it was the, I mean, the act itself, but that I have like a, I have a four-legged friend now. And that is really helpful for me and it helps my anxiety. Um, it helps me feel more grounded. Um, it helps me feel like there's nothing like coming home and having, you know, a four-legged friend greet you and, oh. and having their, their tail and their butt wag. Um, and just like just building that friendship and relationship with um, with the canine um, for me, that's a really special thing. And so that was a really um, a really huge gift. Yeah, and then when we got you home and got everything inside. And when I left, what what would what did you tell me she did when I left? Oh, she was barking and like looking and whining. She thought she was getting both of us. And I mean, she whined all night for you. It was so cute. <laughs> she thought she was getting a two for one package. <laughs> and one of the other things that we've done together is um, 
you were able to get your housing voucher moved over to Johnson County and get into an apartment that is a better fit for you. Yes. And yes. Yeah, yeah. I was, um, I had gotten um, a housing choice voucher through the Kansas City Housing Authority, and I was living in, um, on the Missouri side of the state line or the Berlin, it's like the American version of the Berlin Wall. Um, and um, and I, I had my lease started in February, but I didn't move in until April or May uh, for a few reasons. But, um, and I was planning on staying there longer, but just circumstances um, arose that caused me to need to move. And, um, and so it kind of made sense um, in my eye to move to the Kansas side because I was, I was doing some like respite care, caregiver work. And um, the few clients that I had started working with um, or have worked with were living in the Overland Park slash kind of like Southern Olathe area. And uh, it just made more sense to be closer to that area because I assumed that I would get more clients in that area. Um, it's also, um, it's a better area. And um, also the apartment is, um, I don't have any neighbors surrounding me, which is really nice. And uh, one of the things that um, I've really been struggling with is like sensory issues um, with like definitely sound. And so I'm very sensitive to um, sound in people's voices. And, and in my old apartment, um, somebody would unlock a door and it would almost sound like they were unlocking my door. And even though I knew that was the case, it still puts you on edge every single time. And mm -hmm. I could hear my neighbors on both sides of me. They weren't being loud per se. They were just being, you know, normal volume level. But um, it just it made me feel like I wasn't in my own space. And where I'm at now, not having any neighbors, um, I, I have someone below me, but I don't have anyone above me or on any sides of me. And um, it definitely feels a lot calmer. And I definitely noticed a big difference like the first two weeks. Like I felt myself kind of relax and calm down. Um, and also just being done with the moving process was, um, I'm sure helped with that as well. Um, and also I, I, I'm talking about trying to get help from other organizations. Um, I had 30 days where I had to, where I had to move or I, I time frame I had to move from out of my old apartment and find a new one. And, uh, I'm really nervous because the first time I tried to find an apartment with a housing choice voucher, uh, it took me three months and then it took another month for the housing authority to do their inspection and all the paperwork. And so... I was definitely thinking I wasn't going to be able to get into a place. Well, thankfully, everyone worked really fast and really well. And then all the paperwork got pushed through. Uh, but one of the things I was needing help with was the, um, the, the rental deposit. And I contacted um, three different organizations. And um, I actually went into one organization um, after trying to call them and finally get, and getting, you know, um, sent around like a, to, to various points of contact within the organization. So, so I'm just gonna go in and see what they say. And, um, but because I didn't have a, a lease, like if I would have ha had a lease and I needed help with rent, that would have been one story, but needing help with a deposit is a different story because I didn't have a, a lease yet. And then there was another organization, um, charity, and uh, I sent, I mean, a few emails, I even um, left a couple of messages, but I was ne never able to get in contact with, um, the person that I was needing to get in contact with. And, um, and then, um, and then kind of to backtrack a little bit, I was also worried about just getting in, like being able to get into a place, um, for a few, a, a few different reasons or barriers. Um, and so I was very glad when I was accepted where I'm at now, um, cause that was like my, it was my second pick. Um, but either my first pick or second pick for apartments would have been great. And, um, I was accepted and, um, and then I think I, I, I'd been looking for like a couple of weeks and I couldn't find anything. And, um, the property manager called me and said, Hey, you know, like we, you're finally approved. Um, you just need a higher deposit. I was like, okay, well, that's a, good problem. I mean, that's at least, you know, I've been accepted. And, uh, and Teresa Money Talk, they were able to help with the security deposit. So I was able to like hold my, hold the apartment and get moved out. And, um, 
And then the other thing that was, um, I just am, uh, so, I don't know, so appreciative is, or know, so much gratitude, the, just feel like they fall so short. Um, when I went to, like, needed to move out of my old place, um, Teresa asked if I needed help with, um, like getting the place like cleaned up and um, kind of um, tidied up or cleaned out. And um, and I said, yes. And had she not come over, I mean, I would definitely would not have been able to do as good a job because was, I was definitely overwhelmed by doing that by myself, um, along with just not having the energy to do it by myself. And so having um, having someone else there was um, to, to help with that process was, really helpful and we had a lot of good quality time and a good conversation and um, I mean in no other um, situation if someone was working kind of within any sort of case management capacity would they even like lift a finger for a box let alone helping to like you know clean out and you know finish cleaning up or doing the clean final cleaning for an apartment and um and then she also um, like we worked with movers. We paid for some folks to move you because I've helped three people move now, and I've decided I am way too old to be carrying furniture up and down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> between, between your back and my knees, I don't think we would have. I think we would have hurt ourselves. Oh yeah, I, I mean, I I know I couldn't have done it, and um, it took longer than expected, but. Um, it, yeah, having having movers, and especially during COVID, um, because of I mean, just um, some of the folks who probably who, who I know would have helped, um, their wives are higher risk, and so they're having to be more careful, and so like they wouldn't have been able to help with the with the move, and being single and not having uh, really any family, not any family in the area, um, that, I mean. That, it's like you get it'd be like me like standing here in my apartment going like all right I have to move but I can't move the sofa by myself I can't move the chair by myself like you know like um there are things that I definitely couldn't move up by myself um and so yeah the that was very helpful and civilized especially um how I was moved out of my old place um this was very civilized and actually very healing um like healing move and uh, very, um, yeah, civilized is a good word to say. Some of the things that we're planning on doing once we get our own space. Um, one of the other things is uh, the food pantry, which is going to be more than just food, but it's also going to have non-food items in there. So um, bath soap, toothpaste, laundry detergent, um, feminine napkins, baby diapers, um, batteries, uh, got to change the batteries in your smoke detector, <laughs> <laughs> keep everybody safe. Um, uh, so lots of those kinds of things, uh, will be in there as well. Is that something that's going to be helpful for you? It could be, um, and it will be um, until I, um, what do you call it? Until I start earning some like consistent income, income again. Um, and so, hopefully, once you know, if I can start working, um, my, we talked about this um, kind of like my first goal is to start working um, part time, and. Um, it's kind of in a, in a recovery job, but in something that I find like meaningful and that um, helps other people. And um, and so hopefully, um, I'm really hoping that something um, transpires um, out of uh, Wine Top Behavioral Health because um, th there are a couple of jobs there that looked um, interesting like they, and looked like they would be a good fit. And um, that would be a good start. And then I've been working with vocational rehab um, I've just started, really kind of started that process. It's been going slower than I would like or expected because um, there were some weeks that we, I didn't meet with a VR counselor, uh, but uh, this week and probably next week, we're going to come up with a, a plan and um, 
which um, includes not only kind of longer term plan, but also um, like a, a rebuild, like a rehabilitation plan, which includes um, like medication and treatment, and um, so seeing what they'll be able to cover and what and not cover. Um, and so, um, yeah, um, I'm trying to think. So, yeah, I um, my expenses are really, thankfully, really low right now. Um, and because uh, I, I mean, I I've had a little bit of work, like dog sitting or um, doing a little bit of like you know nanny work on the side. Um, but nothing really substantial. And so I've just kind of been gimping along, like I'll, you know, get, I'll get a side gig and then I'll get some income and then, you know, I'll buy dish soap and I'll buy, you know, paper towels or toilet paper um, or um, put gas in my car, you know, just, and then um, just really bare bones kind of things. Um, not as bare bones as before um, when I absolutely like wasn't able to work at all, but um yeah, it's, it's just, it's a rebuilding process. So I'll have to see kind of what um, what makes sense as I move forward. Yep, and we need to get you back to the therapist that you were working with before. Um, and I know there's some insurance challenges with trying to get that covered. And that's part of what got you over on the Kansas side of things was the Johnson County Mental Health and the Kansas insurance covering uh, some different things that you weren't able to get on the Missouri side. Yeah, I just didn't realize that the Kansas, you had to apply for SSI or disability, and um, which I can apply, but um, by the time I would get approved, I probably won't need it. And that's if I do get approved. Um, and so it's just, <laughs> it, that was uh, a bit disappointing. I thought it would be a, a much smoother process than than it has been. Yep. Well, and it's hard to get the diff the you, with your specific trauma issues. You need a therapist with a specific set of training, and that's not someone who's on staff at the Johnson County Mental Health. So that's part of the challenge. It's crazy because. I'm not the only one, and that just means there's a lot of people going in and out who um, are either getting stuck um, um, and not getting really the tr real treatment they need to get better, because you can heal from trauma and you can heal from PTSD, and um, as long as you, you have somebody who knows how to work um, with your situation, and um, and they just, uh, they, they don't have the advanced skills to, to work with somebody um, kind of with my, with, with yeah, I guess the skill set. Um, and even if someone was, was inexperienced, even if they had the skill set, um, you can work with that, you know. But if you don't have the skills at all, you know, you can't pull something out of your back pocket in working with a, with a client. And yeah. so um, it's just, it's, it's, um, a bit disheartening um, that the mental health field, especially um, for those serv specifically serving the community, don't have the skills needed to really truly like help at a, at a fundamental like fix it level um, when they could. And so they're just they're just putting band aids on. Yeah. Well, and if I if I may bring this up, um, one thing that frustrates me, and I don't share this with you very often just because I don't want to add to your frustrations, but you are a veteran, correct? Is that, do I remember that correctly? But there was um, and I served in the Air National Guard, um, but because of that, I don't qualify for VA benefits. So um, like you have to serve, you have to have a certain number of active duty days. And I don't have that. Right. So that's kind of frustrating because some of those some of those services that are available, you don't qualify for. Right. So, like, if I would have, that would have been really helpful when I had gone homeless because I was so sick that I couldn't work and then I couldn't pay my rent. Instead, I got, like, thrown out onto the street and left 
with really severe symptoms and trying to navigate chaos within chaos. And, um, and there are programs like through the VA, had I qualified for VA benefits, that would have helped me to um, get into um, safe and stable housing um, much sooner than I did. But I was really fortunate though. I mean, um, I, mean I, I worked my tail off trying to get my feet at least underneath me. And um, the whole person was really helpful in that as well, actually, um, early on when I came to Kansas City. It was kind of like, in, um, I currently was residing in the D Dallas Fort Worth area. And I think part of the population is so dense and there's such a great need and there's um, a huge amount of poverty and homelessness. And there's also, I think that's one of the largest homeless veteran populations in the country. Um, and, um, I it was just, I, I, I was not able to like get anyone to, to really hear me or see me or understand me and what I was going through. And, um, and I wasn't able to make any real progress in um, getting things like resituated. Um, but then I came to Kansas City thinking that I was gonna get, be able to get into a program uh, for women who, um, are struggling with like mental health and trauma and um, who aren't able to work, who don't have kids and who um, uh, are homeless. Um, however, my symptoms, they were too severe and some of them weren't the, like the right kinds of symptoms. And so I didn't get accepted into this program. And it was like the one place that I should have like qualified for, I didn't fit into their box neatly enough. And so I got turned away. Um, however, it got me into the Kansas City area and things started to unfold pretty, I mean, um, pretty quickly, I want to say. I mean, I think in October, um, not this year, but last year, um, or like a year and a half ago, I called the whole person and um, and I was like, I, I was like, I need help. Like I need help with to finding housing, you know, and I can't stay in a shelter because of, of PTSD symptoms and sensory issues. Um, and, you know, I don't have anywhere to stay and I'm, I'm really stuck and you can't work on trauma when you're in crisis and survival mode. And I'm just in this, like, uh, the cycle that um, I, I need to get out of. And, um, and so I, uh, anyway, I called them and um, they said, oh yeah, we just got a handful of, of housing choice vouchers from the housing authority and uh, we'll put you on the list. And I'm like, the wait list, you know, like <laughs> months or, you know, and they said, no, 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 um, we'll call you like, um, you're definitely going to get one. And so, um, and then in November, we met with a housing authority um, uh, employee and did all the paperwork and then got the housing choice doctors in hand. And then by late January, um, I had found a place and, and submitted all the paperwork. So, um, but yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was definitely a, a big or, it was definitely a big ordeal. Like that was, I mean, there's all this research that shows that housing first um, is effective and helpful and also cheaper than homelessness. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then like in my situation, I was, I was like, man, I, I was like, I got sick. I had really severe PTSD symptoms. And then I, uh, I couldn't work. I didn't have a support system. And then I went homeless and there was like no support. There was like no support for that if, unless you can stay in a shelter. And uh, it was, really, um, I mean, that was traumatizing in itself. Like we need so much help and you're reaching out and like nobody can help you. Well, I'm glad we've got you in a stable place. That's a good fit for you now. Yeah, I mean, I'm in such a different place. Um, thanks to Bunny Talk. Um, and um, I mean, just since even like Thanksgiving, uh, I'm in a much different place. I mean, just the being in the new apartment and having the um, financial, but relational and emotional help and support. And then even like, you know, knowing that I haven't had to worry about my me medications and being thrown into like crisis mode or survival mode every month, um, trying to get a basic need met. Um, 
does a lot for one's sense of stability. And so, um, which is in the freed up room for me to, to be able, like emotional and mental space to be able to um, start looking for part-time work and to give me some like energy to um, move in that direction. Um, otherwise I would still be spinning my wheels, um, like my head all messed, completely messed up. Um, and so, um, yeah, I mean, ha having, having that someone come along uh, an organization and you can help in flexible ways um, and, and not feeling alone um, and, or so alone um, is, um, has been a huge blessing. Well, I'm glad. And having Zoe helps too. That's yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, and it's so hard. I can't imagine trying to focus on moving forward when your focus is on getting through today. Am I going to be able to pay my car insurance? Am I going to be able to buy groceries? Am I going to be able to pay for the meds that I need? Am I going to, you know, if you're focused on how am I going to get through today? I could imagine it would be extremely difficult to try and focus on moving forward and getting out of the cycle of the crisis. And so I'm really glad we've been able to, to come alongside and take care of some of those things for you. Yeah, well, that's, that's, yeah, the, you just, you described extremely well what I was going through, um, right, like right before, like maybe the nine months before I, uh, um, lost my apartment, my previous apartment, two apartments ago, um, was I was trying to put out, I was trying to meet my the, da the daily needs or monthly needs of getting my rent covered or keeping my electricity on or turning it back on or um, making sure I, you know, kept my cell phone on. Um, and I, you know, I, I couldn't even worry about car insurance because, I mean, that was, that was like number four or five on the list, but I was struggling with just the top like three. And um, it was like, I was trying to put out these fires, nearest fi the biggest fire and or the nearest fire. And um, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> and and, there, and on occasion, I would have po pockets where I could start to make some progress and feel like I could make move forward um, or create some breathing room so that I can move forward. But then um, something else would happen. And um, yeah, it's, it's really impossible to move forward when you're trying to um, just survive. And, um, and like survives, I mean, I mean, like either not get stranded, like driving, um, driving somewhere or making sure that you have gas to get somewhere, um, uh, having a cell phone to communicate in case you need help and to call, to be able to call places for help. Um, and then also, um, even like, uh, um, food that you don't have to like heat up. Like when I was looking out of my car, you know, trying to keep food that, um, that at least like filled me up. Um, and I, and I didn't have food stamps in Texas. Um, and, um, but yeah, so I mean, I, my, my communication, my housing, my transportation and food were all literally, I was in survival mode for, I mean, it felt like I had gotten thrown into, um, like a fifth world country that doesn't really exist, but, um, and even like, and even when I had, um, you can edit this out if you want, but um, when I, when I had taken my clothes out of my apartment in Texas, when I had gotten, um, when I was getting kicked out, pulled out, um, I had accidentally left my underwear in the washer or dryer or into the dryer. And so I didn't have underwear and I also didn't have any money. And uh, it took me like, almost eight weeks to find some place to help me with the gift card so I could go buy underwear. <laughs> That's just like, oh, oh, no, no. Th some things are, yeah. We, we would have definitely helped you out with underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I remember I was treating somebody with dignity and respect and allowing them to, to you know, feel like they're be feel like they're valued and, and you know, just have some self respect and, and that, to know that your clothes are clean and that they're in fairly good shape and that you have the things that you need, such as underwear. 
it's so important. People don't really realize how how impacting not having underwear is underwear that fits or that's clean or that's in good shape or you know folks don't really realize how important that is and all the different ways that that impacts somebody's the way they feel about themselves and just yeah. it, made a, it made a really bad situation especially early on um that much worse and then you know i, I would share that with somebody and they're like well we don't help we can't help with that and i was like you know you know like do you have a gift card to like walmart or walgreens or somewhere you know i just uh <laughs> i just need a little bit of help so i can get some underwear and um and i went into one uh, one charity and they um they were they're were going to dismiss me um and i forget if i like melted down or broke down or what but I was like I just like I need help and um and they said well and so they dug a little harder and they found a Walmart they found a Walgreens card and I'm like I shouldn't have to like break down to um get something so such of such necessity yeah you shouldn't So if I can change topics, um, you surprised me here not too long ago when I learned that you have a PhD in trumpet. I didn't know you could get a PhD in a specific instrument. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that kind of surprised me. I, I'm all but dissertation, so I don't have a doctorate yet, and uh, I won't, not, not in music, but... Um, I was really close, but yeah, you can, you can get a doctorate in pretty much anything. I, mean, I even learned that you can get a doctorate in, in nursing, um, or an advanced as an advanced nurse practitioner, which I thought that was interesting. I didn't realize that it's a, it's a PhD or it's a, it's a doctorate of nursing or something like that. It's not an, it's not an MD and it's not a PhD, but it's a doctor of nursing. I didn't even know that existed. So you used to teach music, um, right, when you were? Yeah. yeah, I've been, I mean, my, I've been in music since, I mean, I was a little kid, and I played sports in high school and um, did some other things, but uh, when, when I was in junior high, I wanted to be, become a neurosurgeon. And then, like, I, I remember doing all these, like, research articles or, for projects on the brain and whatnot. And then for some reason, my sophomore year in high school, I decided I, I wanted to become a musician and um, or an orchestra, an orchestra musician, to be specific, at least at the time. And so um, I went to um, the local university. Um, for, it was a private school. Um, they had a, um, a good like a good music program and the. Uh, I'd already been working with a trumpet professor, so I um, so I, I I went there, and for my undergrad, and then I went to uh, Indiana University for my master's degree, um, which is one of the largest music schools uh, in the country, um, best and largest. And then I went to UNT, which wasn't necessarily ever on my radar. It just kind of made more sense when I was in Texas. Um, but yeah, I had. Um, um, I, I've taught, I taught at an international school um, in Afghanistan, in Kabul, um, the International School of Kabul. I was the K-12 music teacher, so I taught general music through all, to all the elementary students, and then I did like a general music um, choir for the junior high, and then a general music class for the high school, and then um, I directed the high school choir, and I was there for three semesters, which was super cool. And then when I, uh, during that time, I had started in um, my teaching certification in Texas. And so I completed like all the online coursework and either needed either student teach or um, teach one year as a beginning teacher. And which the second option seemed better because I got paid <laughs> instead of paying for experience, I got paid. And, um, and so that brought me down to like South Texas and I was there for, um, I was a band, assistant band director at the junior high and high school level for um, for a year, and then um, 
I had the opportunity and was offered a position to teach to be um, an adjunct professor of trumpet full time at the university um, down in the valley um, in, in South Texas, which is had been my ultimate goal of, of since. Um, I mean, since I was a sophomore, is to be a professional musician and to teach, uh, to be a college professor. And so I did that for a year and a half, and then funding changed, and I then needed to um, kind of transition or decide what to do, and it made sense for me to start my doctorate. So then I drove 10 hours north um, up to the Dallas-Fort Worth area to Denton, Denton, Texas, and I started my doctorate in, uh, in trumpet. But yeah, you, you can get, get, get your doctorate in jazz trumpet and um, regular, like orchestral trumpet. You can get it in um, oboe. You can get it in multiple woodwinds. You can get it in uh, jazz guitar, jazz piano. Um, yeah, I mean, flute, anything. And, and some schools will have um, their 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 doctorates will be um, like a, will be jazz flute pedagogy uh, or will be um, like flute pedagogy um, or some will be fl fl flute for performance. And really the only difference is kind of uh, what uh, kind of academic classes are required. Cool. Well, one of the things I'd like to do when we, when we are able to start our after school program is when the kids are having a safe place to hang out and they're not busy getting their homework done or doing adulting 101 type workshops and things is to have them learn an instrument and have them play in a band. And I'd love to, you know, I'd love for them to be the band that's playing when we're doing our praise worship and such there's just so many things that the kids can learn from learning how to play an instrument learning how to read music learning how to play in a band where you have to listen to each other and work as a team and yeah just so many aspects of things that they can learn but they're having fun at the same time and um for for some kids and some financial demographics being able to entertain is um, kind of a status symbol. It's, you know, that's what, that's the popular kids the, and whatnot is the ones that can entertain. And, you know, you look at the ones that are the class clown and whatnot. Well, what if we can help them be able to entertain by they learn how to play an instrument and they learn how to, to do some of those kinds of things, which are skills that, that can, they can use the rest of their life. Um, and be productive and lift people up at the same time. And I think that would be fantastic. And I would love, if you feel up to it, to have you help out with that. Yeah, I would definitely be interested in helping out and um, coming brainstorming and whatnot. So, yeah. So, several things that we're doing when we get our own space that we want to be able to do is, um, well, for one, to get our dealer's license so that we can more easily accept and pass on donated vehicles for folks whose vehicle is essentially not repairable because it's it needs so much done. Um, it, to be able to have our drop and shop store, to be able to have our food pantry, including all the non-food stuff, um, our backpacks and school supplies, to be able to have some support opportunities where an opportunity just to get together and whether we're making a craft stuff for some upcoming holiday or just because we want to decorate our places, whatever, uh, get together, movie night, sports night, you know, let's go watch the Chiefs on TV or whatever. Uh, just all of those kinds of things. The incentive store is a biggie, um, which is the intention for the incentive store is that everything is new and it's a real life budgeting lesson. So you have earned money talk money or money talk credit for everything that you're doing, working towards financial stability. And then you get to go in the incentive store and you can choose how you want to spend those credits buying the new stuff that you want and that you need. You need a vacuum, you need a microwave, you need bedding, you need pillows, what, you know, whatever it happens to be. 
and we'll have some conversations when we get to that point because we want to make sure that we're stocking it with things that people actually want and need that would be helpful to have. The um, laundry facilities is one, and I know you have a washer and dryer, so that's not quite as big an issue for you, but uh, are there some things that you would, are really looking forward to when we get our own space or some things that maybe we haven't talked about that you've kind of had on your mind that it's like, wow, it'd be really helpful if you could, whatever. And, you know, we're not, I, I say we're doing this as money talk and, you know, it's money talk and the donors and the sponsors and the volunteers, but it's also our business partners and collaborations. And, and so it's not like we're doing this in a silo by any means. We, it's, there's a lot of other folks involved in one way or another helping make all this happen. But is there anything that you're really looking forward to or anything that you would like to add to the wish list of things, services or opportunities that you would like to have available? Well, I think you mentioned, you know, like having different types of groups um, kind of use the space. Um, it's hard. I think it, there aren't a lot of good support groups and um, or pe like even peer led support groups. I mean, there's like AA and there's NA. Um, and then I, I go to a group um, for mental health at through the whole person. Um, but and there's some through. Oh, what's it called? Something national mental health. Um, well, I'm drawing a blank. Anyhow, um, they have some groups, but um, they're like you can call. Like you, when I was looking for groups, I would call, and um, the, either like somebody else was leading it, or the group had dissipated, or the times were different. And so, um, I, I I look for I would look forward to um, plugging into like a support group. Um, Okay, awesome. And, Good to know. Yeah, and then um, so we had talked about how like I was um, or how I feel like I know I kind of have a, an idea of what direction I'd like to go um, kind of moving forward um, as I continue to heal and um, which is to be a, a therapist and to have the skills um, and then to be able to develop the experience to work with individuals with, who are um, like maybe tougher clients or uh, who have more complex situations um, or cases. And um, so to be able to, um, to kind of be a safe place um, for individuals knowing that um, they're getting like getting high quality, they're getting um, effective and um, and safe therapy. Um, and then, and so to, so to be able to, um, hopefully to be able to give back um, later on down the road. Well, it's nice to know and hear that uh, once you get up on your feet and you're financially stable, that you're not gonna be like, okay, Teresa, bye, I'm done with you. <laughs> You'll be sticking around and, and giving back and paying it forward. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. So I'd miss, I'd miss you. Uh, I miss you too. I, I, I definitely have enjoyed getting to know you the last several months. <laughs> and we had, we had, a, I feel like we had the, like, it was like a month we saw each other a lot. And then I feel like we haven't seen each other. I think it's been like a month or, or six it's weeks. Been a little crazy. Yeah, yeah. We've been super busy with all the video stuff and trying to get that rolling. And so, um, but yeah, I'm excited for, for like everything you're doing. And see so a pipe broke in the basement. Our master shower uh, was leaking into the living room. So we had to tear it down to the studs. My mom had surgery. Uh, my daughter and mother-in-law came up from Orlando for the weekend because she got to graduate. My daughter got to graduate, although that particular session got canceled because of st uh, storm coming in. Um, and then all the video stuff on top of it. It's been a little, been a little crazy <laughs> around here. Uh, thank you for your patience and grace with me. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you for your patience with me. I, uh, 
like I said, I, I apologize for dropping off the grid last week. And um, I'm finally getting my the dust on my feet. What do you call it? Kicking the dust off my feet. Yeah. Well, something I try to do is if I haven't heard from somebody for a while is to, to reach out and just, if for nothing else, to say, hey, hi, how's it going? Do you need anything? Is everything going okay? Tell me what's going on. And and just to kind of touch base, because I know when you're really um, in the midst of chaos and stress and, and drama, like you had mentioned, having that mental space and the ability to just to stop and realize, oh, if I only had this and be able to figure out who you need to reach out to. And it's like where really it's probably more helpful to have somebody to say, you know, hey, how's it going? What's going on? Oh, it sounds like maybe this would be helpful. Would that would that be something that would be helpful for you if I could do this? Um, so I've I've heard that from a few folks, and so I try to reach out. And I just I've not been good about that the last few weeks because, like I said, it's been super crazy around here. So. Yeah, I do need to connect with you about um, car insurance again because it's been a minute. Oh, it's been that we should be about to. Yeah. And um, I checked my email and I got action needed. <laughs> and uh, okay, well, then, then let's action that. <laughs> and that's just, uh, and I've kind of been procrastinating because it's um, like you've been so helpful in so many ways. And I'm like, I don't want to ask for help again. <laughs> um, but, um, but I have to say, I, um, I think one of your questions was like, you know, do, like, do you feel judged or do you feel treated with respect? And I, I mean, every time I've, I've needed help, I mean, I haven't felt like condemned or like, or anything along, along those lines. Um, it's, it's, um, it's been um, very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, very, very respectful and like, dignified, I guess. Um, and, um, and then I also appreciate like, on my end, like, there's this constant urgency of like, all right, I need to get like, I'm stuck. I need to get, I need this to happen. I need this to happen. I need this to happen. And things, nothing in the last couple of years has moved as quickly as possible, or as quickly as I would have liked. Um, even with therapy, like I thought I'd already be through a year of therapy already. And here I am still trying to figure out how to get to the, like one of the few therapists who can help me. Um, and so, and then that slows progress of overall, but, um, but yeah, I, I, I haven't felt, I mean, I felt supported and I felt heard and understood. Um, and I don't feel like I'm, like being seen as a like uh, as like a, who do you, a slacker or someone who's like oh definitely not yeah who's uh, I don't know um, like hurry up and get your act together kind of thing because um, that's definitely like the mentality I got from like my family and just so it's kind of, I mean I think at first that was kind of lingering or I felt like okay when that when is that going to come and um, <laughs> And I think tr starting just to trust that, you know, that I am doing what I can and I'm, wor and I'm working as fast as I can uh, with what I have and that, um, and that you have and will continue to be like supportive and not like hurry up and get your beep, 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 beep together. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm hurrying, I'm trying, but things only move so fast. <laughs> Yeah, you had mentioned, um, which I, it was nice to hear, but at the same time kind of broke my heart when you said you're starting to learn to trust somebody again. And I'm really glad that you trust me and that you feel safe with me and that you can tell me whatever it is you need to tell me. You can call up and say, hey, you're the first, I, I you know, something happened and I really want to share this with you or call up and say, hey, get it and it happened and you know, it's causing a problem and whatnot, and, and that you feel comfortable doing that, but it just not, I don't know what it's like to feel like you can't have, you don't have anybody to trust, and that's the part that kind of breaks my heart to, it's like, so I'm really glad that you feel safe enough 
and that you feel like you can trust me and to tell me whatever it is that you need to tell me and that I'm not going to be judging and I'm not going to be hurry up, get your act together and uh, here she goes again or anything along those lines at all. So I'm really glad about that. Yeah, because I mean, I, um, because I mean, pre, I mean, previously in life, I've been very goal oriented and I've been successful in lots of ways. And I've been an educator and a teacher and a helper and and I know what it is to work hard. And in my head, like the back of my head, I'm thinking if somebody like myself like crashed and burned, I would want to find out like why and not just kind of like be like, you need to get your act together. <laughs> um, and so, and it was kind of like, I, I did maybe such a good job at being too like independent to a fault that I didn't have the support system that I really needed to. Um, and definitely not, I mean, coming from a dysfunctional family, um, definitely not family support, but, um, but I even thought, man, you know, like when, you know, I was like, like at the bottom, 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 you know, that, um, at least my my sister would maybe help, but she left me stranded. She left me without a cell phone, um, all without like telling me. And um, and I was just like, man, I'd I'd rather not depend on anybody than depend on somebody and have them pull out um, and leave me like stranded and abandoned. And um, and and two, I mean, a lot of people don't know how to deal. Or they feel really uncomfortable with really difficult situations with other people. They just don't know how to uh, respond or they feel like they have to respond a certain way. And, um, and realizing that just being there is oftentimes enough. And um, even like, even like that, the um, day that you came over and brought me the gift, the, um, the Walmart gift card for groceries, like just knowing that, I had a little bit of, um, of a safety net for something so basic um, is um, very, it's very stabilizing and it's, um, and knowing that um, somebody like, care, like cares enough to make sure that I have like, like food and um, even like with my car insurance, you know, like at least the bare minimum right now um, for when I do have to drive, which I, I don't think I've driven for two or three weeks because I'm pretty anxious about driving um, now without my driver's license. But um, uh, but knowing that if I do have to go somewhere, um, at least I have car insurance, you know, at least I, there's I'm getting some help so that I can do the things to help so to take care of myself yes yes so all right well i think we're running out of time and right. i wanted to thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview with me and yeah. we will definitely be getting together because i've got some dishes to bring over to your house so right. ooh, you have more than one plate two bowls um <laughs>